died on Friday. A uh, graveside service will be Wednesday at 11. I think I'm going to be there, but I don't know what cemetery. So, Our uh, gospel lesson today is uh, Jesus' statement. It falls right after Peter's confession, where he confessed Jesus to be the Messiah, the Christ, the Son of the living God. And now he, Jesus explains what it means to be the Messiah and asks us if we want life to take up our cross and follow him. Let's uh, prepare our hearts for worship. This is a brief order of confession and forgiveness. It's found on the third page of your bulletin. Please rise. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. In the presence of God, who sees our hearts and our minds, let us confess our sin. God, our strength, we confess, we confess that we are that we captive to the power of sin that dwells within us. us. We, we put, put ourselves, ourselves first and the others last. Steps. What we, what we think, think will make, make us happy, happy leaves us longing for more. Even when we want to do what is good, we find ourselves doing the opposite. Rescue us from death's grip on our lives and raise us up day by day that we may be alive to God in Christ Jesus. Amen. Sisters and brothers, all have fallen short of the glory of God. Therefore, we are justified by God's grace as a gift. Nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, in whom we have forgiveness of sin, life, and salvation. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Share God's peace by greeting those around you.
Lord be with you. O oh God, we thank you for your Son, who chose the path of suffering for the sake of the world. Humble us by his example, point us to the path of obedience, and give us strength to follow your commands. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
sing together here as I have sung with you. Enjoy each other here as I've rejoiced with you. Love one another, love one another as I have loved you. And care for each other, care for each other as I have cared for you. And Our first reading comes to us from the book of Jeremiah. O Lord, you know, remember me and visit me, and bring down retribution for me on my persecutors. In your forbearance, do not take me away. Know that on your account I suffer insult. Your words were found, and I ate them, and your words became to me a joy and the delight of my heart. For I am called by your name, O Lord, God of hosts. I did not sit in the company of merrymakers, nor did I rejoice. Under the weight of your hand I sat alone, for you had filled me with indignation. Why is my pain unceasing, my wound incurable, refusing to be healed? Truly, you are to me like a deceitful brook, like waters that fail. Therefore, thus says the Lord, if you turn back, I will take you back, and you shall stand before me. If you utter what is precious and not what is worthless, you shall serve as my mouth. It is they who will turn to you, not you who will turn to them. And I will make you to this people a fortified wall of bronze. They will fight against you, but they shall not prevail over you. For I am with you to save you and deliver you, says the Lord. I will deliver you out of the hand of the wicked and redeem you from the grasp of the ruthless, the word of the Lord. Give judgment for me, O Lord, for I have lived with integrity. I have trusted in the Lord and have not faltered. For your steadfast love is before my eyes. I have walked faithfully with you. I have hated the company of evildoers. I will not sit down with the wicked. aloud a song of thanksgiving and recounting all your wonderful deeds. Our second reading comes from the book of Romans. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. 
outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal, be ardent in spirit, serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints, extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice, weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 16th chapter. From that time on, the time of Peter's confession, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed, and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord. This must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man has come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his glory. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you may be seated. I would like to invite the children to come up. If you come up, I'll give you a present. Good morning, it's good to see you. I'm going to tell you a story about a young boy by the name of Ben. His last name is Franklin. We know him as Benjamin Franklin. He, um, and when he grew up, uh, many consider him one of the wisest uh, individuals that ever grew up or ever was part of the United States. Anyway, when Benjamin Franklin used to like to tell the story that when he was young, he had a birthday, and as a present, everyone at the party, all the adults, put coppers in his pockets. Do you know what a copper is? That's what they called pennies. And they filled his pockets full of pennies. And then they said, Ben, you can go down to the toy store or the hardware store where they sell toys and go buy yourself a toy. So he went, 
happily down the street. And as he went down the street, he saw a young boy blowing a whistle. And Ben liked the sound of that whistle so much. That's why I have these here. It's not exactly a whistle, but it's the closest thing I had to a whistle in my office. Um, so anyway, the young boy saw this, uh, Ben saw this whistle, and he was so enamored by the sound, he asked the young boy if he would sell it to him. And he took all the money out of his pockets, and he said, I'll give you all this money. And then the boy gave Ben the whistle. And Ben was really happy. He went home blowing his whistle and he blew it all around the house. And everyone asked him, Ben, where did you get that whistle? And he told them the story. And then everybody made fun of, of Ben because Ben paid about four times what he should have for that whistle. He could have gone to the store and bought four for the price he paid for one. Guess what? Ben paid too much for that whistle. So that became one of the wisdom sayings of Benjamin Franklin. I paid too much for the whistle. And when he saw someone that uh, paid too much money for something, he goes, boy, that guy paid too much for that whistle. Well, Jesus asked a question today. What is your life worth? And he said, in order to truly have life, you must give up your life. You must give it to Jesus. And then you'll truly have life. Jesus wants you to put him first, okay? And truly give him your life. I'm going to give you one of these. Try not to blow it in church. And remember, though, every time you blow it, that Jesus wants you to give yourself to him, give your life to him, because that's how you find life, okay? And you find life eternal. Let us pray. Repeat after me. Gracious God, Gracious God. we thank you for life. We thank you for Jesus. Thank you for Jesus. Help us to find life. Help us to find life in him. In him. In his name we pray. In his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Take one and pass it down. And try to keep it off the f Do we have enough? I've got more. You can, go, you can go back to your seats, by the way. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Do you feel called? It's interesting that most pastors feel called, but most everyday Christians, that's you, don't feel called. Another interesting thing is that most pastors think all Christians feel called because most pastors think that's what they teach. But Jesus wants us to understand 
We're all called as Christians to take up our cross and follow him. To find our lives by giving our lives. Um, on this Labor Day weekend, I thought maybe we would look at our labor because sometimes we don't always take the big picture. And I believe any labor done in the name of Christ has big consequences. Any labor done for the sake of goodness and wholeness has great consequences. That's part of our calling with God. Uh, any of you remember uh, the names Shifra and Pua? Back in, uh, we've had the advantage in our Tuesday morning Bible studies to look at the texts that are part of a lectionary series that looks at the Old Testament differently than our texts do. And they happen to be midwives in ancient Egypt. If you remember, as Exodus opens, a new pharaoh has uh, come into place who did not know Joseph, and he's alarmed that the people of Israel, the Hebrew people, are becoming such a large population. So he decides he needs to do something, and he's threatened by the men in that population. So from then on, he wants all the male baby boys of the Hebrew people to be killed. So he goes to Shepra and Pua, the midwives, and tells them to kill all the baby boys. They, of course, find they can't do that. They, they, their calling in life is to bring life into the world, not to kill it. So when the Pharaoh finds out these little babies aren't being killed, he has them come. Was it the males? Every step of the way, it seemed like the females were more of a threat to Pharaoh than the males. Now, why do I bring this up? Well, a simple act of civil disobedience by Shepra and Pua allowed Moses to live, the exodus to happen. Uh, people who have been in slavery in the around the world have always liked this story and they consider the God of the Hebrews to be the God of Moses, the Exodus who brought people out of slavery. Have you ever thought that some act you may do would have that ripple effect that could change the outcome of history. Let me give you an example of it. Andy Andrews wrote the book, The Butterfly Effect, and whether or not you agree with a Andy Andrews' theory of the butterfly effect, of course, the butterfly effect uh, is a scientific phenomenon that said it was started back in 1963. A butterfly flapping its wings could start molecules in motion that 
might go all the way around the world, and by the time it gets around the world, there's a, a tornado in Kansas. As improbable as that may sound, over the years, with quantum physics, they say, yes, that is probable. Andy Andrews wrote the book, The Butterfly Effect, because he noticed that sometimes very small actions on the part of someone had this ripple effect that could change the world. The example he uses is the example of Norman Borlaug. Norman Borlaug, it was said that he saved two billion people from starvation because of his work finding um, high-yield, disease-resistant corn and wheat. Now, as Andy Andrews tells the story, but was it Norman Borlaug who was the, the real um, miracle worker, or maybe it was Henry Wallace. Henry Wallace was a one-term vice president of the United States. He was, before he became vice president, he was vice president under uh, uh, Delano Roosevelt, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, and what, what he had done, he, he, prior to that, he was Secretary of Agriculture. The reason he became Secretary of Agriculture is what his father did. His father had him, from a young boy on, go and take walks with a great Missourian, um, Washington Carver. And George Washington Carver. And he used to take, by this time, George Washington Carver was a professor, and he would take walks with him, and George Washington Carver was able to show little Frank, or, um, Henry Wallace his love of agriculture. And it was Henry Wallace who appointed Norman Borlaug to the position to take over this research that was being done in New Mexico to, to find disease-resistant and drought-resistant corn and wheat, which saved two billion people. But then we could even go, well, maybe the real hero is Moses and Susan Carver. They're the ones who adopted George Washington Carver. Uh, they came from Ohio, Moses and Susan came from Ohio. They were against slavery. They lived in a slave state, Missouri. They bought two slaves because they needed the help, Guile and Mary Washington. They had three children, James, uh, a daughter, and George. George was an infant. Raiders came, Civil War, Southern slave raiders came from the South, from Arkansas, uh, came to their farm, uh, killed uh, many. They hid James away. When they tried to steal George, Mary hung on to him, clinged on to him, and she was uh, carried off along with her daughter and with George. Moses had nothing left but his prize horse. They had destroyed everything else. He sent a man to run down the, the raiders to see if they, he could get back Mary and her daughter and her son George. And the man came back and said, George is the only one left, and if you want him, you can meet him at such and such intersection. So he got on his horse, traveled several hours to the north. At a certain intersection in the street, four hooded men came. And they threw a gunny sack to, George, to, uh, to Moses. The gunny sack contained George Washington. He then 
gave them his horse, and he walked back to the farm, and he and Susan adopted George Washington, and he became George Washington Carver and his brother James. Now, was it Moses and Susan who really are responsible for saving two billion people? Now, if you do a little bit more research on George Washington Carver, and this is something Andy Andrews didn't do, but I think the real hero in the whole story, Susan always encouraged George academically. And when it came for him to go to high school, he could not go to any of the schools around them. So he had to walk the six miles down to Naosho. And when he got there, the first time he went down there, he got there and the school was already closed. So he went and slept in the barn next door. The next morning, he's awakened by Maria Watkins. Maria Watkins, George says, was a kind woman. And he said, he asked her, do you know of any place where I can rent a room? And he got to know Maria Watkins, and she said to him, you must, you must learn all you can, then go back out into the world and give your learning back to the people. You must learn all you can and then give back to the world. Go out into the world and give back your learning to the people. George Washington Carver, uh, oh, by the way, when, when she asked him who he was, he said, I'm Carver's George. And she said, you must never say that again. Your name is George Carver. From now on, your name is George Carver. So from her, he received his identity. And from her, he received his mission in life to learn all he can and then go out into the world and give it back. I think the real hero is that simple woman in good faith accepting George as a human being, giving him his name, his identity, and his mission in life. Jesus tells us, take up your cross and follow me. If you want to receive your life in this world, you have to give it. You have to lose it. How do we lose it? By doing what we can to further the kingdom of God, doing everything good, everything that will build God's kingdom, faithfully working. And then those little statements we make can have that ripple effect to save Two billion people? Maybe not. But to do great things. I'm reminded of this. I think I told you that the Sunday after the week that we had finished vacation Bible school, one of our young mothers came up to me and said, I want you to know Bible school is a great ministry because I am here today because of Vacation Bible School. Never had any contact with the church except through Vacation Bible School. A simple thing that we Christians do, right? But life-changing. Albert Schweitzer said, Open your eyes and look for some person, some work for the sake of humanity, which needs a little time, a little friendship, a little sympathy, a little toil. Whether there is not some place, see whether 
there is not some place where you might invest yourself. A simple thing. Look for a place to invest yourself. And then he also said, the only ones among you who will really be really happy are those who will have sought and found how to serve. Well, Jesus wants us to be his servant people, following him, finding life by investing ourselves in him and his mission. Amen. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father.
Filled by the Spirit, let us join the whole people of God in Christ Jesus in praying for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. As we celebrate labor this weekend, help us to remember that all we do as your disciples is never for naught. Bless our labor as we rally our congregation's time, talents, and resources. Give us the courage to deny ourselves, take up our cross, and follow you. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. As the summer breezes wane and fall showers refresh, Make us ever mindful of our earthly blessings and renew our zeal to care for your creation. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of peace, we hold before you all who have woken up today to violence, unrest, and injustice. We pray for the people in Donetsk, the Donetsk region of East Ukraine with the news of Russian troops being deployed. We pray for the people of Guinea, Liberia, and Sierra Leone where reports have come in, in stating that more than 1,550 people have died from the Ebola virus. We pray, for the, we, we pray for those who are working to find a cure and ask that your peace surround all who suffer because of this illness. We pray for all who are being held against their will, remembering two Americans, journalist Stephen Sotloff and 20 and a 26-year-old female aid worker who are being held hostage by Islamic State militants. We pray for the people of the Middle East. May the ceasefire continue to hold. We pray for continued healing in Ferguson, Missouri, so that understanding and rebuilding can begin. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. When our pain is unceasing, give us patience in suffering. We ask for your healing presence for Odella Arnold, Alton Burnell, Gail Davidson, Betty Evans, Zamir Godfrey, Larry Hopper, Jim Lampy, Dorothy Lokensgaard, Elaine Mitchell, Wayne Myers, and Mary Thomas. Are there any others? Yeah. When hope seems lost, remind us that you are with us always. Comfort those who mourn, especially the family and friends of Bridget Kendrick, Joanne Allen, and Austin Miller. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Into your loving hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abundant mercy, through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen.
God of mercy and grace, the eyes of all wait upon upon you, and you you open open your hand hand in blessing. Fill Fill us with good good things things at at your table, table, that that we we may come to the help of all in need. need. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you. O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Our Father Father in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your name. Your Your kingdom kingdom come, come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. All is ready. Our Lord invites us. Please come. You may be seated. body of Christ given for you.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Thanksgiving to God. We thank you, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have fed us in a way our hearts can understand with the saving body and blood of Jesus Christ. Enliven us by your presence in this meal, that we may be your presence in the world, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. There's a couple of things I want to mention on... Um, September 4, excuse me, on September 14th, which is two weeks from today, the bishop is coming. He's doing a, going to have a meeting. Uh, he's visiting all the ministry areas, and we are ministry area eight. And uh, you can see the announcement that he'll be here from 3.30 to 5.30, right here at Messiah. So if you would like to come and see that, and I'm going to encourage our church council to come and uh, be there and meet the bishop and whatever else that needs to be done. Well, um, so mark your calendars for that. Next week, next Saturday, there's a big push, of course, in the ELCA called God's Work, Our Hands. Next Saturday morning, we are going to do some outreach into our neighborhood, some cleanup on South Creek Trail. We're going to uh, go through the neighborhoods and pick up uh, de debris that they want discarded, and we're going to have dumpsters here to throw it in. And re read your bulletin insert or your messenger insert. Cassie, is there anything else I'm missing that needs to be said? Or oh, indoor activities also? Can you hear me? Oh, great. <laughs> okay. So I just wanted to encourage everyone to let us know, too, if you're coming, because we are going to provide lunch on Saturday. And so uh, we'd love to have you come work and then eat with us. Uh, Prince of Peace is going to come out as well. And so um, I did want to see if my daughter would come up. She's going to be in Hope Notes. And so she can tell you what that is. Um, there is this thing called um, the Ozark Food Harvest that we're helping out for kids. Since they just went back to school, we're, they are going to prepare these backpacks and they um, have hope notes in them. They're these half pieces of paper and you write an encouraging thing on it. And like an example would be, you're awesome or have a good day or something like that. But the main thing is you like, wouldn't want to put anything about them being hungry or anything. So, or sad, you know. How about so. you paid too much for that whistle? <laughs> So she with and going on. They have a deadline. They need lots of help. So it's going to be something anyone can help with, men, women. And uh, so we encourage you. There's inside stuff. There's outside stuff. We're going to get the, 
the uh, prayer garden cleaned up. There's an arch that's going to be installed. If you have a truck, bring it. If you just want to come help write some encouraging notes, all that. we need help with everything. And if we all do this together, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And we have a potluck on Sunday. So uh, we're going to provide the main dish. And if, if you can sign up, we have a sign-up sheet out there for a side dish, salad, or dessert. That would be great on rally day. Okay, Matt Coleman. Matt, wave your arm. He is the one in charge of pickup trucks and trailers. So see him if you're willing to do that. All right. There's zero battery, David. That's why it's cutting off. Zero out. battery? Yeah, it says zero. Well, that's about enough what I, uh, what I need. And uh, you, Marilyn just yelled at me, and she said, you know that choir started on Wednesday, this Wednesday last. And we had kind of a slim attendance and stuff like that. I'm not sure why that is. If you want to sing, if you're inclined to sing, even if you think you can't sing, come and sing with us. It's fun. She's a nice lady. She won't beat on you or anything like that. So come sing with us Wednesday night. Okay. Is it possible the crowd was slim because people didn't come? Could be because I was there. I don't know. Okay. All right. Anyone else? I think we've covered the main highlights. Receive this benediction. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the grace that sustains every breath we take, the love of God that gives us courage and strength, and the abiding presence of the Holy Spirit that fills our hearts with comfort and peace be with you and all those you care about, now and forever. Amen. Guided by the gospel, we welcome all to worship, make disciples, hunger for ministry, nurture youth, gather resources for growing ministries, and offer healing and care to all in need. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. <laughs>